This racist sub-narrative he just made up is just laughable. Come on, are you guys even scientists? The Netflix documentary Seaspiracy released in March exposes the cruel and devastating reality. What's happening in our oceans? The eye-opening documentary has inspired many to change their lifestyles, but at the same time has caused so much controversy. Now, I've seen vegans responding to the fishing industry and the environmental groups' responses to the documentary, but not marine biologists or experts debunking it. So that's what I'm doing in this video. I'm gonna talk about sustainable fishing and some laughable stuff, so make sure to stay to the end. Let's jump right in. So to begin with, there's no question that overfishing is the biggest threat to marine biodiversity. And scientists do agree that humans could not exist on Earth without the ocean because 50 to 85% of the oxygen we breathe comes from marine phytoplankton going through photosynthesis. Now I'm looking at this Seaspiracy fact check by Bryce D. Stewart, a marine ecologist and fisheries biologist at University of York in England. He says that the ocean supplies over 3 billion people with 20% of their daily protein needs and in many island nations and coastal areas, there are few if any other options for obtaining the nutrition that fish provides. That is true, there are people who we call sustenant fishers, people who need to fish to survive and sustain their lives. This documentary is not asking those people to stop eating fish, but the people in the western developed countries and Japan maybe, who are unnecessarily consuming seafood. According to this Vox article, another expert says this is a movie that forces the problems of global fisheries through a small, privileged lands to make the Europeans and North Americans who can give up fish feel guilty enough to do so. I disagree with the guilt part, it's informational and educational, but privileged Europeans and North Americans who can give up fish? That's the whole freaking point of the movie. Because them unnecessarily taking a huge amount of fish out of the ocean disrupts the ecosystem more and faster, further impacting the climate and oxygen humans breathe, which would of course affect every human on earth. That's just one of the issues. We actually want the sustenance fishers to keep eating fish from a public health standpoint. Because the global collapse of the fish population due to our overconsumption of fish is making them eat bush meat instead, which increases the chance of Ebola outbreaks. So if we really care about the sustenance fishes in the coastal regions, we need to stop eating fish so that their food source is secured. Unfortunately, much of the other 85% of the planet will continue to eat fish because many will not even know about a vegan diet. But just because other parts of the world will still have to eat fish doesn't mean we should continue damaging the ocean and killing trillions of marine animals every year when we don't have to. Now before moving on to sustainable fishing, let me get this out of the way. Stuart says, if we turn entirely to the land for the nutrition that the world currently gains from the sea, the environmental impacts on land would be catastrophic and much more visible to humans. In terms of carbon footprint, well-managed fisheries and aquaculture systems actually have a much lower impact than many other food production systems. This is very true, but that doesn't change the message of the film because by nutrition from land, what he's referring to is the animal-based protein. The production of meat and dairy is significantly more damaging than that of fish. Now the most common claim against veganism or plant plant-based diet is that production of soy and nuts emit more greenhouse gas than fish. And come on, up to 91% of the Amazon rainforest is deforested because of the soya production. So vegans are the ones to blame because the soy boys eat tofu all the time forgetting that 96% of the soy is fed to livestock animals. On the other hand, humans, not just vegans, are responsible for only 4-6% to of the total soy from Amazon. He mentioned carbon footprint, so according to this study by Nature Sustainability, we could prevent up to 547 gigatons of CO2 emissions, preventing the chance of hitting 1.5 degrees Celsius rise by 2050 by adopting a plant-based diet. So yes, just not eating fish isn't the answer. Not eating animals in general is the answer. Well said Stuart. Now he says, The biggest error is to say that sustainable fisheries don't exist. He cites an assessment that says, Two thirds of the fish stocks were being harvested sustainably. Well what about the other one third though? According to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, Nearly 90% of the world's marine fish stocks are now fully exploited, overexploited, or depleted. In theory, sustainable fishing had always existed, but needless to say, in practice, 
That's not what's been happening. If it was, we wouldn't see this number. He acknowledges that even with improved fisheries management, we are unlikely to be able to sustainably produce much more seafood from wild capture fisheries. Today, 50% of the seafood we consume come from aquaculture, which does seem to be sustainable. And he says, if we are to feed the growing global population, further expansion of aquaculture is necessary. However, many of the most popular seafood species like salmon and prawns are carnivorous, so we have to feed them wild caught fish, which he just said is unlikely to be sustainable anyways. One third of the wild caught fish are fed to not just farmed fish, but also livestock animals such as pigs and chickens. So we can't call the system or practice sustainable, can we? Aquaculture is also toxic to the surrounding environment. And as I explained in my last video, according to New York Times and Science Advances, some of the seafood fed to the animals and humans are slave produced, possibly even today according to many of the world's leading human rights groups. Stewart even says, these are only some of the species produced by aquaculture. Farming of herbivorous species has a very low environmental impact. So why wouldn't you say that we should reduce our consumption of salmon and prawns? He in fact says something very opposite. He defends the industry for the jobs and GDP and all that, of course. And then quote, even the UK, where fish and chips are considered the national dish. Is this what scientific fact check is about? He literally answered the question, if we want to save the ocean, do we need to stop eating fish with fish and chips? I don't know how sustainable cod and haddock are. I suspect that they're probably also devastating. But one thing for sure, they're carnivorous. So the fishing and seafood industry, the consumers, and the governments who still subsidize $20 billion so Solely for overfishing, according to the UNCTAD, have collectively led to this consequence. Therefore, we are or should be held accountable for this. So given this number, continuing to say that sustainable fishing exists in theory, so we should keep eating fish and chips is not a responsible thing to say. It's not the time. The time is over. This is all the water you got for the week. Only 10% is left and you don't know when it rains. What do you do? You don't drink the water when you don't have to. If you think about it, every single largest retailer in the world who sells most of the fish the world's consumers eat says that they sell sustainable seafood. Walmart only sells MSC certified seafood, which makes the Marine Stewardship Council questionable and suspicious. They are a business. Basically, the certification gives the retailer the incentive to store more certified products, which they can sell at a premium. And it gives the MSC themselves the incentive to certify more products, which is pretty problematic. Even the industry criticized the certification, saying it's pay to play and corrupt. Last year, the World Wildlife Fund stated that they were concerned by the lack of overall improvements and the continued weakness of the certification and assurance process. And again, it also certifies products contaminated with child labor or forced labor. And this this report calls the MSC certification a fraud. So that's that. Seaspiracy also talks about how industrial fishing contributes to the plastic pollution in the oceans. There's something called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which is the largest accumulation of plastic in the ocean, larger than the area of the state of Texas. And according to this study, staggering 46% of the plastic was fishing nets, also referred to as ghost nets. They are what kill sea turtles, seals, and whales, and other marine life. Daniel Pauly, a marine biologist says, it's problematic that filmmakers characterize attempts to reduce land-based ocean plastic pollution as trivial. This is all lives matter nonsense. The film reveals that the fishing nets is the biggest aspect of plastic pollution in the ocean. And it needed to be said because everyone thinks plastic straws are the problem, which make up 0.03% compared to 46%. So let's not drink from plastic straws and not eat fish. How about that? Okay, it's time for the most bizarre one. Ready? The film breezily uses anti-agent to make its points, and everyone whose agent is seemingly a villain. When did they say that? They were documenting the notorious dolphin slaughtering in Japan, and sea slavery in Thailand where most people are Asian. Why would they purposefully find white or black people to interview? That's racist. Or editing based on race is racist. This racist sub-narrative he just made up is just laughable. It's not just him. Stuart said the same. Or maybe he didn't. Come on, are you guys even scientists? Finally, after all those issues, Polly says, The makers want us to believe that not eating fish is the central way we should go about fixing the problems that industrial fishing creates for the oceans. Being vegan is a position that only a small fraction of the population of wealthier countries will take. I don't even know where this myth comes from. Eating a plant-based diet 
doesn't mean eating every freaking type of nuts and seeds for breakfast and fishless fish for dinner. She says pushing for legislative changes and improved enforcement of existing laws is the best way to get involved. No, in the capitalist society, educating people, spreading awareness, and changing the supply and demand situation is the most effective way to stop the degradation of the oceans. And we can push the government to spend the subsidy money to support the people in the industry financially instead. I'm not a fan of character attack, but Polly is a board member of Oceana, an organization being questioned in the film, and who also had some credibility issues in the documentary Cowspiracy. It was hiding something, and one of the goals of these documentaries is to find out why those environmental organizations aren't talking about the biggest issues. So just like the film has an agenda, a valid and useful one. Those experts and groups also have some. Maybe gaining profit or fish and chips. I'm done. If you haven't watched Seaspiracy, please do. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.